Now, 75 years ago today, a world record still unmatched was achieved by a steam engine called Mallard. For just a couple of minutes, the locomotive thundered along at speeds of 126 miles an hour. So to mark the occasion, the engine will be reunited with five of its sister locomotives. It's happening at the National Railway Museum in York. Lots of enthusiasts from all over the world will be there, along with Danny Savage. Uh, Danny, there, have you got a bit of a thing about uh, steam engines like those enthusiasts who are going to be there today? I'll tell you what, Charlie, what, the day we had out on the footplate of one of these steam engines a few weeks ago uh, was great fun. It's one of the best days we've ever had at so-called work. And we went on one of these A4 Pacific class steam engines. The star of the show is, of course, Mallard. It's been shunted into the Great Hall at the Railway Museum in the last few minutes. It's here with five other steam engines of its kind. And this is all to celebrate the 75th anniversary of a world record, which has never been, bitten, been be beaten, and also a great achievement for British engineering. The last time Mallard was in steam was back in the 1980s. But 75 years ago, this engine raced into the record books. It was on Mallard, one of the LNER's streamlined Pacifics, that driver Duddington set up a speed record that has never been beaten. It reached 126 miles per hour with driver Joseph Duddington on the footplate. The record run wasn't caught on film, but afterwards he recounted the experience for radio. Go on, old girl, I thought we can do better than this. The needle crept up further. 123 and a half, 124, 125. And then for a quarter of a mile, while they tell me the folks in the car held their breath, 126 miles per hour. Three quarters of a century on, and Mallard is gleaming. Today, she will be joined by men who used to work on her footplate. It was every schoolboy's ambition to be an engine driver. When you first start, it's hard work and dirty work. But as you progress up the ladder, you look forward to it. You look forward to being part of this. Walter Blazy's top speed at the controls of one of these was 117 miles per hour. Everything was shaking, everything was rolling, <laughs> and uh, you had a job to stand up to put coal in the fire, but 117, so what it was like for 126, I don't know. <laughs> and today, for the first time ever, all the surviving A4 steam engines, including this one, will be brought together in York. Half of them still work, so when we were offered a trip on one, well, it would have been rude not to. First thing in the morning, it takes several hours to get this steam engine ready to roll, but the sights and sounds are fantastic. Little wonder, then, that people travel from all over the world for a trip on this train. For the driver here on the North York Moors Railway, it's a privilege to operate one of these. Oh, there were the thoroughbreds. They were, uh, apart from Scotsman, there was Sir Nigel Gresley's finest design meant to run really from uh, King's Cross to Edinburgh non-stop, all the crack expresses. And they proved their worth over and over again. And what about the fireman who does all the hard work? The job of the fireman in BR days on one of these would have been back-breaking. From London to Edinburgh, he just about empty the tender, which is nine tonnes of coal that he'd shovel into the firebox. At a maximum speed of about 90 mile an hour, they'd be going for about six or seven hours and it'd be almost constant back-breaking digging for him. These streamlined engines, whose design was inspired by Bugatti, are now national treasures and one of many reasons that made the age of steam great. It really is fantastic to see all these lovely sloping noses of these steam engines lined up together. This is Bitten. This still works, and it was run up from London at the weekend. Uh, it got up to more than 90 miles an hour on the way up. Quite a speed for an engine of this age on the main line. With me is Bob Gwynn. He's a curator here at the National Railway Museum. Bob, how special is it to have all these last surviving six together? Well, it's fantastic. I mean, say, we've not had six of these together like this, I don't think, the 19, since the 1930s. And, um, I mean, the shape is a beautiful streamlined shape. It's a evocative of that period of time when 
streamlining was in style, in vogue, and this is really taking steam locomotion to its ultimate expression. We hear a lot these days about high-speed trains. These were the high-speed trains of their, their era. Well, absolutely. The LNER decided to introduce a high-speed train network. This is high-speed trains to Newcastle, to Leeds, and eventually to Edinburgh. And some wag said at the time that it made uh, London a suburb of Newcastle. So they were really working at making a new network. And looking at these, I mean, do you think people will come from all over the world to see this lineup? Is is it that unusual? It's very, very unusual. I mean, to say two of the locomotives only survived because they were given to the Americans and the Canadians. They've been imported back into the UK for this special event and repainted and refurbished. So getting six together, you won't see it again in your lifetime, no. Bob, thank you very much for talking to us today. So something we'll never see again in our lifetime, this line-up here with Bitten Mallard, which is its home here at the National Railway Museum, but that will always be here. And Dominion of Canada is the one you can just see poking out behind us here. That will be unveiled by the High Commissioner, of Ca Canadian High Commissioner here this morning in a special ceremony. So lots going on, a very special line-up, and thousands of people expected through the doors here at the National Railway Museum in the next couple of weeks to see these. Back to you two.